Hi, my name is Jacqueline. And this is the area where I get experience the most confusion around being loyal to my own soul. Um, it seems that some of the things that I want to do for myself uh, don't harmonize um, easily with being a parent, at least the way I've set up being a parent. And in my mind, I, I have these unhelpful thoughts that it's this zero-sum game, that she gets to be happy or I get to be happy. And because of the way I was raised, it's very important to me to be this thing that I call a good parent. And uh, I think some of the ways that I choose to be a good parent um, work out as being good for her, uh, but maybe not always loving choices for me. Sometimes I end up doing things that, that seem good, but I don't want to do. And um, so I'm just really seeking some coaching on how to be loyal to my soul when I have this uh, important responsibility that's not complete. There's still yes. goal line parenting to do. Yes. Would you be willing to share an example, a specific example of one of those situations where you feel the conflict? Uh, what the, the where I feel most acutely right now is um, about where I live. Um, I'm a single parent. Um, her father and I are uh, not married anymore. And I would love, my soul would love to move to the Bay Area. Um, but there's this voice in me that says it's wrong to take her away from her father. He's active, loving, adores her, wants to be a day-to-day -day presence in her life. And she's shared that she wants to be where I am. And so I just feel very paralyzed um, because it just doesn't seem to be a way to sort of create a solution that's graceful for everybody. Yes. You know, what stands out to me in what you shared is that inside of you, your challenge to perceive of a possibility, a creative solution that really would be a win for everybody involved, for you, for your former husband, and for your daughter. And would you say that that, that thought, in a sense, prevents you from even talking about this, in exploring what the options might be? It prevents me from talking about it beyond the, the resistance I get, you know. Um, from him? From him, yeah. And, you know, and I, t I definitely want to acknowledge everything he's done to be a real yes. father to her. You know, yes. I, don't, I don't want him to think that that's meaningless to me because I think it's important for a girl to have that experience of a loving father in her life. What if whether you move or don't move has nothing at all to do with what's at issue on the soul line? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. See, whether you move or not is a goal line choice. Mm -hmm. So the assumption that you're making is that there's, that one of the choices to go or to stay is going to be more aligned with being loyal to your soul than the other choice. See, to me, that's a goal line approach as opposed to a soul line approach. The soul line approach would be, what do I need to do in order so that whichever way I decide, I can be the most loving with myself that I can possibly be? Well, I'm happy to change to that question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, See, why, what about the possibility of if you stay your loving mother, if you go your loving mother? Well, I feel like I'm making that choice. I feel like I'm, sta I'm here and I am a loving mother. Okay. So you say I'm making that choice, but it's disturbing your peace. So someplace inside, it's not okay.
I get that. I have a, an, a kind of a related question because it sounds like the way this is set up internally, it's win-lose. Yeah, I agree. You know, and I'm wondering if you had other situations in your life, sometime earlier in your life, where you felt that kind of dilemma, that it was win-lose. The thing that comes to mind is just in my past relationship with my mother, it felt like only one of us got to be happy. Okay. <laughs> so now we're talking more like the kind of thing that Mary is bringing forward. So how might you resolve that inside yourself? Well, what pops to mind is to create a situation where everyone gets to be happy. I mean, see, what I would suggest for your consideration, if outer experience is a reflection of inner reality, and if, let's just suppose that you, you described your relationship with your mom, where only one of us, it seemed like only one of us got to be happy, and now you're in this situation with your daughter and it's appearing the same way. So what that brings forward for me is what is the matrix within your own consciousness that is being projected now onto this situation with your daughter? In other words, is there something having to do with your relationship with your mom and that experience that you had growing up, that either she got to be happy or you got to be happy, that is still seeking resolution and healing inside of you. Yeah, I would say that's, that's yeah, that's accurate. Um, and, and what might that be, Jacqueline? I, I felt... Um, like so many of my needs did not get met when I was uh, a child and that I, that my parents didn't look carefully at me and try to meet the needs that were being expressed. And that was a really painful experience of my own childhood that when I became a parent, I think I maybe constructed my idea of what a good parent was, uh, was sort of against that to say, I'm not going to do that to my daughter. Yes, yes. So what if, um, there's a tr what if there's an opportunity for healing here? An opportunity for the younger Jacqueline to somehow release the hurt, the judgments, the conclusions that she drew about all of that. It's like if she could speak about this, what would she say, Jacqueline? When is it going to be my turn? Yeah. When is it my turn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to just let that come forward. About how old is she? Just intuitively, what comes forward? Five. About five years old. And what was she missing at that time? I'm um, just feeling cherished. Yeah. Just being seen and really adored. You know, and sometimes I look at my daughter and how much, you know, kind of love is so demonstrated to her. Yeah. Uh, you know, that I, f I, mean, I feel, I mean, I feel like that's awesome for her, but I do feel like that five-year-old in me is a little bit jealous. Is jealous? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you probably remember hearing us say 
that healing is the application of loving to the places inside that hurt. And how, how do you feel towards the five-year-old inside of you? You know, I feel enormous compassion. And I really also feel like even parenting my daughter has helped heal that stuff. Like, I get to ha have some of that love and attention and play and fun that I didn't have when I was um, younger. You know, and at the same time, you know, I, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't always prioritize um, loving her in the way that I prioritize loving Sophia. You know, what I would, uh, my suggestion is only one of encouragement in that regard, to go inside, and if you're willing, we can do this right now, to go inside and be with little Jacqueline, to allow that love, that unconditional love, that feeling of cherishing her, of her preciousness, to really move into that place inside of you. What would you like to let her know? It's your turn. You don't have to wait. Everything you need. It's okay to want it right now. I love you. How is that inside of you, Jacqueline? Feels like a drop of water on a very thirsty plant. Yes, yeah. You know, and I just, I, I just want to encourage you. You know, from your USM education, that our encouragement would be to go in there, to spend time with her, to really um, communicate the cherishing, the unconditional loving that she's precious to you and that you would listen to her and be with her in the loving. And I would submit to you that that feeling of being at home that you'd like to experience is actually available inside of you, independent of where you choose to live physically, whether it's here in LA or in San Francisco. See, I would encourage you in the inner work because as long as this remains unresolved inside of you, it's like you will project it out into the environment and the very feeling that you had with your own mom then starts to flow over and be played out in your relationship with your daughter. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. It doesn't. I actually even yesterday had the awareness that there are a lot of things that I do to be this good mother thing that might not actually be what she wants. And so we sat down and I said, you know, let's have a little mom review. Let's write a job description. What do you want? Because I feel like I'm doing all this stuff, but I have a sense that you don't care about the laundry, you know? <laughs> and it was, it was really sweet. I mean, she kind of said, oh, I can do my own laundry. You know, can we do crafts on Thursday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can. So the being with is what it is that really feeds her. Right. And I, and I hear you saying in terms of the little Jacqueline inside of you, 
that being with is also what nourishes the five-year-old within you. Yeah. See, the more this comes to resolution, the inside, the, the less there'll be that sense of the dilemma with no real win-win solution. Because yeah. that's just a projection of what was unfulfilled when you were a little girl. Well, the, the lucky part of being a mom is I have been blessed with a ridiculously lovely daughter who's very maternal and soft and sweet with me. And I just, it, I, it, she's such a gift in that way. Um, and she inspires me to grow inside, to, to match what's so present in her already. So thank you. That's really beautiful. Thank you, thank you Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you.